Five Dragons. Ryan Condor was in L.A. right now with a good chunk of the cast from House of the Dragons Season 1 and also the man, the lord, the god himself, George R. Martin. Uh, I shared the picture on my uh, social media here on YouTube and then also on Instagram and, and on Twitter. Please go follow me. Those are linked down below in the description. Also, um, if you're a fan of me here on YouTube if you, and you don't want to do the social media stuff, please just slap a like on this, subscribe, and turn notifications on. I'm being eaten up alive by the algorithm. I don't even think it has to do with my blacklist. I think this is just how YouTube's new algorithm is, which is why I've been putting out so much long-form content and then also trying to mix things up a bit. But anyway, Ryan Condo did an interview with Deadline, and in that interview, he mentioned that there will be five new drafts dragons for house of the dragon season one now my opinion i've got four of those dragons for sure pinned down and one of them is kind of an option let's start with the option first because that's the fun one cannibal now i did a live stream just last night where i mentioned how i kind of figured out that cannibal I, I, in my opinion i confirmed why cannibal is not bigger than vagar and is probably just an average sized dragon around the size of maybe melee's probably a little bit smaller maybe around this um the uh size of caraxes right but the reason why is because no one cannibal is a wild dragon. Cannibal potentially may be making an appearance in season two. It will make an appearance in this show at some point, maybe season two, right? Um, but uh, the small folk in canon, the small folk on Dragonstone don't exactly know the origins of cannibal itself. And because cannibal is a black dragon, its size can often be mistaked, right? But you look at the context why cannibal has the name cannibal. Because it eats other dragons, not just dragons in particular, but mainly hatchlings on Dragonstone in the hatcheries, in the caves that the dragons sort of incubate their eggs in until they're ultimately picking up and put inside the cribs of baby Targaryens. So, if a dragon the size of Vagar or Beleriand tried to sneak into a cave, well, someone would see it. And it wouldn't get very far. So in my opinion, Cannibal is just an average-sized dragon that's wild. No one mounts it. That potentially is the wild card of who we could see for the fifth dragon in Season 2 of House of the Dragon. But the other dragons, confirmed in my opinion, first one, Sheep Stealer. Sheep Stealer is a dragon in an event that's known as the Calling of the Dragon Seeds, where basically in canon, Jaceris and Mushroom, <laughs> of all people, hasn't made an appearance on the show yet. I know Ryan said it was the guy in the background, but I don't count that, right? Mushroom suggests that... Um, the blacks need to get more riders. They have dragons, but they need more riders, right? So he's like, why don't you guys look at all the bastards around Dragonstone? There's a bunch of dragon seeds. So Rainier does this, and one of those bastards that's called forth to take action is this girl known as Nettles. Now, Nettles is a brown girl that doesn't have any Valyrian features, and Rainier ends up saying that the only reason why Nettles was able to tame Sheepstealer, Sheepstealer is for sure one of the confirmed five dragons that will be making an appearance in Season 2, but Rainier says the only reason why... Uh, you know, she's able to do this is because she used sorcery. So Nettles is one of the dragons. Cannibal may be one of the dragons, but another one is Silverwing. During the calling of the dragon seeds, um, Silverwing is mounted by this dude named Off the White, right? Off the White is basically this drunkard who is a bastard of Targaryen lineage, and he claims the Old Queen's mount. The Old Queen is the wife of Jaehaerys, who we saw at the beginning of the series, right? So that Silverwing and uh, Sheep Stealer will for sure be making an appearance, possibly Cannibal. Then another dragon that we have um, is going to be Tessarion. Now, Tessarion is going to be confirmed in the show because we know that Daeron the Daring, the youngest child of Alicent and Viserys, is confirmed for Season 2. So his dragon is Tessarion. So three, uh, we have, you know... Uh, Sheep Stealer, Silverwing, and Tessarion. And then the fourth and last one that I know for sure is going to make an appearance in uh, Season 2 has got to be Moon Dancer. Moon Dancer is written by Bela. And Bela, um, it was a scene that was cut from Season uh, 1, Episode 10, but Bela talks to her, her grandmother, Rainies about how she's ready for war and she can mount her dragon and go bring about fire and blood, right? So um, it's interesting that... Uh, we didn't get to see Moon Dancer, but there was also a uh, someone who works for VFX um, for House of the Dragon said that Moon Dancer is a freak of a dragon. It looks crazy. No other dragons have the same color pattern, so it'll be awesome. Um, and Moon Dancer, in my opinion, is the fourth confirmed dragon for House of the Dragon season two. So let me rerun those again: Sheep Stealer, Silverwing. Um, we have uh, 
Wow, did I really forget them? That's ridiculous. Sheep Stealer, Tassarion, Silver Wing, Moon Dancer, and then possibly Cannibal. If you all enjoyed this video, please do me a massive favor. Slap a like on it, and then subscribe. Please subscribe here on YouTube. Uh, not only is the algorithm eating my channel up, but it's also subscribing people left and right. Um, so please do those things if you enjoyed my content. And if you want more, check the link down below. I just did a two and a half hour live stream last night talking about all the many different prequels that we are going to potentially be getting for A Song of Ice and Fire. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And please subscribe. Along that time, there is Budar, Ixos Tower. Oh yeah, also super special shout out to uh, the North Muscle Remember, right? Brian Johnson and Tyler Schnabel. They are all executive producers of this video. And they're members of my Patreon family over on patreon.com slash your reviews. That's basically a way for me to no longer be uh, reliable on YouTube. Like, my main source of income is YouTube's ad revenue. So, uh, Patreon just helps me not rely on it as much. And also, you unlock a vast library of content that is available exclusively over on Patreon. Um, and you can join for just $2. That's linked down below in the description. And thank you to every single member over there. Y'all support is greatly appreciated. And thank you for watching. Alone, not.